I'm Dr. Shabdosh Shivanaji coming back to you again with a very interesting topic today. I'm going to share with you about the selection of the potency and how to go about and follow up of cases. My reference purely for this is Kent's lesser and minor writings where he mentions about two chapters observation regarding the selection of potencies and cities and degrees. Now Kent has given many references over his writings about the series of potencies. He mentions about 30, 200, 1m, 10m, 50m, cm, dm and mm. So he mentions about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 potencies in the C scale. And Kent has given various references that this 8 potencies you'll need in your practice. Obviously, in many of the pharmacies, DM and MM potencies are not available in, in today's world, but you can definitely work up to CM potencies. Now, I'll give you various references and I'll be sharing with you from writing quotes from Kent himself. Please make sure you go back, especially for homeopaths and young budding homeopaths or even experienced practitioners. Go back to your Kent's writings Make sure you have a read through this and you'll definitely ponder upon it. Perhaps something you're going wrong with your prescriptions or with your selection of potencies. To be honest, my friends, each and every one of us or most of us do make a good first prescription. We can make a good first prescription. We prescribe well on it. But sometimes it's difficult to know how to go about it in the follow up. Oh, I prescribed. Uh, Pulsadilla 200 patient was doing really bad and then this came up I changed the medicine now this is where Kent's writings come in I'll be sharing with you different quotes here patients coming from physicians who always give a low potency some curative action was observed then remedy was changed so you gave a Pulsadilla 200 C and the patient was doing better but some new symptom came up and you changed the medicine Kent mentions this he goes to the another homeopath who again retake, revisits the case and he prescribes a Pulsadilla 1M, patient starts improving again. So, you know, patients will come and tell you, I have taken Pulsadilla with that homeopath. Doesn't matter. You need Pulsadilla now, but perhaps in a different potency. Physician must learn that he cannot practice homeopathy with one potency of each drug. You have to learn this. You have to depend on the octave of potencies. This is Kentian octave. Like there is octave in the music. Similarly, they are octave in the potencies as well. So you have to understand that when you prescribe one potency, you must stick to the remedy and prescribe another potency before giving up on the remedy. Now, Ken gives another wonderful experience here. You know, in many seminars, in many webinars across the world, I'm asked this question, sir, potency and repetition, sir, potency and repetition. My friends, potency and repetition depends on each case. But Kent always gives a guideline that you must prescribe two doses of each potency. So, you have prescribed Pulsadilla 30C. Patient has improved for a time. When improvement ceases again, you prescribe another 30C. So, to give two doses of each potency. And two doses gives the most beneficial effect. You can extract as much as you can of that potency before moving on to the next potency. And Kent mentions you can always go higher up in the scale with the selection of the potency. So two doses of each potency gives the most beneficial results. He mentions this in observation regarding the selection of potencies. I'm, I'm quoting Kent again, two doses in the same plane gives the best results. So you have to remember this. And always ask this question. If you put your entire health status in the graph, since your last follow-up, Will you tell me you're still improving, you're standstill, or you're declining? If the patient is still improving, wait and watch. Saclac, placebo. If the patient is standstill or declining, you can repeat the same potency again. So two doses of the same potency before moving on to the next potency. And this is a very clear dictum mentioned by Master Kent. Now Kent also mentions this. I've been in the pharmacy of many homeopaths who prescribe CM only CM potencies. And I've been in the pharmacies of many homeopaths who prescribe only tinctures. And Kent mentions this and I fully agree with him. For you to practice homeopathy, there's a wonderful latitude of potencies between tincture and CM. 
So you, ha you must have in your armamentarium between tincture and CM all the potencies. You may not know what you may need. And the selection of the potency, my friends, is a matter of experience, is a matter of observation, is not a matter of law. It depends on susceptibility of the patient. We'll talk about that sometime else. But make sure whenever somebody tells you, oh, I'm a CM prescriber, or oh, I'm a tincture prescriber, that's rubbish. For each patient, you may lead any potency between the latitude from tinctures to the CM potencies. And that's very, very important to understand. So that is also mentioned by Kent. Another factor which you must understand about the Kentian octave. Like in music, there is an octave similarly for selection of potencies. Kent mentions this Kentian octave. And he mentions it's always better to start from low and gradually go higher. So you start from 230 or 200. He mentions this in his lesser writings as well. 30C is a universal potency. So you can go lower and you can gradually ascend the potency so that the patient is sensitized to that remedy. So that the patient is sensitized to the potency. Kent mentions this and I'm sharing with you the practical experiences which I have incorporated in my practice along with Kent's writings. Kent mentions whenever you start with CM potency and you descend, the patient does not react so well enough. Many times I used to first give CM when going lower, action was seldom so strong as when climbing upwards. It's always better when you ascend the potencies rather than descend. I observe sharp aggravation when beginning with CM and you know this is very important. Many times we start with 10M, with 50M. Kent mentions this and I've corroborated with my practice as well. Observe sharp aggravation when beginning with CM. Seldom observe aggravation when beginning low in relation to the sensitiveness of the patient's nature. So in, every, in any case, you're starting with 30, you're starting with 200, you always gain because the patient is sensitized to their potency and they can, you can always go higher. Even with skin cases, even with cases which have had aggravation in the past, if you start with 30, gradually go higher, 200, 1M, 10M, the patient is sensitized to that remedy and will always give the best results. So that's very, very important to understand from that perspective. Kent mentions this and this is my corroboration as well. I always begin lower and gradually go higher, avoid shocking even very sensitive patients. So you can always start lower, you can go higher. So that's important to understand. And how many doses of each potency? Two doses give the best results. Kent mentions the third dose of the pot, same potency doesn't give any results. So you'll see people prescribing four doses of 30C, six doses of 200C. That's again rubbish. Kent mentions this and again corroborating this from my practice. Two doses of the same potency gives best results. Third dose doesn't have that degree of effects. Now also you have to understand Kent mentions that with the potencies you can obviously go higher but you can descend as well. Many times with skin cases, I've had aggravation with the 30C. I have dropped to 6C. In osteoarthritis cases where degenerative osteoarthritis is present, I've started with 30C. Aggravation, I dropped to 12C. So you can always descend in the scale of potencies as well. This has been mentioned by Master Hanuman in his chronic diseases as well, where he mentions he started with 30C, then dropped to 24, to 18, to 6C as well. So you can always go down in the scale if you have an aggravation even with 30C as well. So you have to understand you can go higher up in the scale of potencies, you can go downhill in the scale of potencies as well. And again, Kent mentions this in a case of a chronic disease, it's always important to understand each potency works at least for three to four months. So when you're prescribing a single dose, wait and watch, obviously as I mentioned, ask the patient's health status. Then if there is a standstill, repeat another dose of the same potency, each potency will improve the patient for three to four months and this is also important to understand and I am vouching this from Kent's words if you are sure it is a similimum give it in a higher potency until that ceases to act and finally the highest potency I prescribed pulsated the 200 C patient was improved but then symptoms came back repeat another 200 C go up to 1 M you know extract as much as you can of that remedy before shifting on the other remedy you know, this is important to understand. We all make good first prescriptions, but it's important to stick to it. My father still does, and he did that when I started off, that whenever I used to see some cases which had been prescribed by me, and I hastily changed the remedy, and used to write stick, so that I stick to that remedy. Because it's important, 
you can go higher up with the scalar potencies so that the patient improves with the greatest benefits. In this way, we put the patient under a series of potencies and keep up the prolonged curative action for several years. Kent used to give one remedy and the patient used to be better for a few years itself. So make sure, and that's the most important dictum from this video, that if you are prescribing a particular potency of a remedy, patient has improved, some symptoms have improved, some have not, go to a higher potency. That has improved, again stand still, give two doses of the same potency, again go to the next potency. So you can go at least up to 50 m and cm and do not give up on the remedy before prescribing at least two potencies of that remedy. So I prescribed 200 c, no change at all. Next follow up or follow up after that patient came back, I prescribed a lower 30 c or a 1 m and then patient started improving remarkably. So even the patient comes back to you in the first follow up, this is from a young homeopaths. You feel there has been no change, stick to that remedy, trust yourself, trust your polychrist, prescribe another potency of that remedy before giving up on that wonderful remedy. So this is also quite important to understand. Kent also mentions this, you do not go from first to last in music, it does not preserve the chord, you take the third and fifth, third dose in the same potency gives no results, that's important to understand, two doses of each potency before moving on to the next remedy. So that's also very, very classical. And whenever you're prescribing a polycrest for a chronic disease, make sure if the patient is improving or sticking to it. Honey, uh, Kent again mentions this. Chronic sicknesses are cured by keeping the patient under the influence of one remedy for two or more years. I mentioned each potency works for three to four months and you can keep the patient on that particular remedy for at least two years. Now another important factor to understand, why the difference after 200, 1M, 10, 10M, 50M, why is that? Again, Kent mentions this, that whenever you used to prescribe two potencies which were close to each other, there are hardly any effect. But whenever you used to separate the potencies that produced a marvelous results. I once used potencies that range nearer to each other, but repeatedly found degrees must be far enough apart to represent an octave. So after 30, 200, he prescribed a 500 or a 700 that produced no results. But after 200, when he prescribed a 1M, that produced remarkable results. Similarly, after 50M, he prescribed 70M, no results. 50M, prescribed a CM, that was remarkable results. So potencies must be far enough apart to represent an octave. But do also remember this, you can always, Kent always mentions this, it's always best in a chronic case to go higher. But you can drop also, as I mentioned, in cases of skin, in cases of osteoarthritis, which is important to understand. Also, another important factor to understand about the series, we have prescribed, say, a sulfur or a calcadia carb. We started from 30C, two doses of the potency, 200C, 1M, 10M, 50M, CM. And after prescribing CM, you feel I have gone up to the highest potencies. What should I do now? Again, Kent mentions this. If you retake the case again, it's still a calcadia carb case, it's still symptoms of calcarea carb, you can always repeat the series, you can always go back and you can always repeat the series, you can again start with 30C of the calcarea carb. So if the patient has improved up to the highest potencies, but you still feel it's the patient's symptoms still represent the same polycrest, repeat the series again and you can achieve again maximum results. So. This is about the selection of potency. Again, I repeat the chapters for the series and degrees and observation regarding the selection of potency from Kent's lesser or minor writings. Summarizing what you learned today and how is it important practically. You know, I'll always try and correlate philosophy with practical homeopathy and that is very, very important to analyze. A, as I shared with you, Please make sure you prescribe two, poten two doses of the same potency. Third dose doesn't give any results. So you're prescribing 30C, patient improved, stand still or deteriorating, repeat 30C again. Again improved, wait and watch, placebo. Again, the symptoms are coming back, go to the next potency. Number A. B. Please make sure you at least try two potencies of the remedy before giving up on the remedy. I prescribe 200, no change, go at least. You can drop to 30C, you can ascend to 1M, but make sure you try two potencies in the next follow-up. Try another potency in the next follow-up, give or giving up on the remedy. C, whenever a patient is improving on a particular remedy, stick, stick, stick to it. Prescribe 200C, 
Patient has improved, go to 1M, go to 10M. As I mentioned, if you're sure it is a semilimum, give it in a higher and the highest potency till you extract all the benefit you can. It's D, it's always better to start with the lower potency and gradually go higher up to the CN. But obviously in cases of skin, in cases of osteoarthritis, you can always drop to 6C, 12C if you have an aggravation even with 30C as well. So that's very, very important to understand. I've tried to share with you practical utilities of Kent's writings and I'm sure you'll benefit from it. I'll do another discussion on how to select a particular potency, which is obvious another big topic. But I hope you learn from this. Young homeopaths, experienced practitioners, make sure you go back to Kent's lesser writing. Sometimes it's important to go back to a basics and refurbish it, nourish it so that you can improve your practice so that you can benefit humanity. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Long live Hanuman. Long live Homeopathy.